Oh snap. Y'all saw the title. Is this the end for Dofus Such content? Damn, what happened? Well, let me talk about it in this episode of Dofus to Talk Radio. Y'all boy got hit. Y'all boy got hit hard, guys. I was just minding my business, and all of a sudden I got rolled up on. Pat. Y'all boy tough though, but when they saw how tough I was, they went. Pat. They hit everything. They just left me lying on the street. Broken arm, broken ribs. They even went ahead and broke my hopes and dreams. Shit, that left y'all boy to die. <laughs> they took everything. A man can only take so much before he breaks. So I don't need no rumors spreading around. So this is what happened. Oh, <laughs> that's a pretty dramatic intro. <laughs> so I never announced it, but Ankama actually reached out to me, to your homeboy, uh, to become a partner content creator. Awesome, right? She, we, were, we were moving up in the world. And it was all legit, too. They gave me this thing to sign. I asked a bunch of questions and all that. You know, I became a partner content creator for Dofus Touch. And as a partner content creator, uh, one of the perks is um, content creators are able to use emulators to make content. I was like, yo, for reals? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, whoo, that sounds nice. And of course, this is awesome because let me tell you, making content for this game is a huge pain on the butt. I've gotten into the groove of things, but it's still a pain nonetheless. Uh, I use an iPhone to record uh, sometimes you probably noticed um, some of the phone notifications pop up when I'm recording, but I pretty much use the screen record feature on my iPhone to uh, record gameplay footage. To get a little technical, and what, what makes this a huge pain in the butt is that the icon records at a variable frame rate, which pretty much means if I just import the, the footage raw into the editing program I use, it's all jacked up. The uh, frame rate is off, the audio becomes out of sync, um, and I have to fix all this stuff. And this becomes particularly annoying when I do uh, long uh, recording sessions because my phone starts catching on fire, starts to lag, and and the recording starts the recording itself starts to become um, unstable. So these have been things that I've I've learned to kind of work around. So the opportunity to be able to officially work with an emulator and possibly just bypass all this uh, sounded super awesome to me. So in turn, I was super happy I could possibly streamline this process. They didn't give me any details in regard to uh, approved emulators or which ones I should be using. So I just went ahead and Googled Dofus emulator. Obviously, I'm aware of the use of emulation in the game. Uh, I know people use emulators to play, which personally I don't have a problem with. But going back to why I play Dofus Touch, it's because I could play on my phone. And in reality, if I wanted to play on the PC, I would just play the PC version. At my job, I spent all day in front of the computer. So the last thing I wanted to do is, is come home just to be on the computer again. So I never really messed with uh, the whole emulation thing. Like I, I have my two iPhones, I have my two iPads, and, and that's what I use. So I was totally ignorant to the fact that when I Googled Dofus emulation, uh, there's people out there trying to, trying to scam you. <laughs> And unfortunately, that's how they got me. Uh, they obviously had my login username, my password, and but let, let's rewind it back a little bit. So I had downloaded it, uh, again, to test some recording to, uh, to see what it would be like to make content using this software. And I sort of opted out not to use it uh, just because even though recording with my iPhone is a huge pain, the, the footage is, is crispy when I use my iPhone. The video quality comes out sharp. It's 60 frames a second. It's, it's nice. But I was recording my live reaction to the Crossmo note. After I finished it, I logged into the game. All my equipment was gone. I was like, what the heck? Maybe it's like a glitch or something. I relog, still butt naked. Now I'm like, hmm, something ain't right. I logged into another account and the same thing. So pretty much my accounts got cleaned out. <laughs> I quickly sent a ticket to support, but I already knew, I already knew the chances of getting my stuff back was pretty much zero. And I was right. About a week later, because their, their support is so slow, they pretty much tell me there's nothing that could be done. I'm like, yeah, if you wait that long, yeah, it's, it's gone, it's gone. 
Plus, considering my prior experience with trying to work with support, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew it was a lost cause already. Uh, so, so last year, when the Pandala ramp up was released, I got stuck in the dungeon exit map for the uh, Fire Firefox factory uh, because the NPC wouldn't trigger its dialog box when I was trying to talk to him to let me exit the dungeon. So I sent a ticket and I was like, yo, can you just like reset my location? Just teleport me out of here. And they, they didn't do it. I, I sent them videos, detailed instructions of how I got stuck. And I swear, it was like talking to a wall. It's like they never looked at the attachments. They never really read what I, what I posted. And I would just get like what it seems like the scripted canned responses. And I was literally stuck there for like a month. A month. I couldn't play the game for a month, pretty much. Until they patched the, the bug with, the, with an update that was applied to the game. So I knew I was, I was screwed already when it came to support for Mankama. So boys, long story short, I'm pretty crippled in terms of making content for you guys. My characters weren't optimized, but, but they were pretty decked out with, with endgame gear. And let me tell you, this stuff's not easy to get. It takes a lot of resources, but more importantly, it takes a lot of time. I, I started playing this game during quarantine out of boredom and when I had all the time in the world. So all that stuff I lost was pretty much the accumulation of the past three years. It sucks, but surprisingly, I'm not too butthurt or salty about it. Um, I know a lot of people in this position would, would definitely feel burnt, and rightfully so. But I never saw Dofus as an investment of any kind. I was having fun with it. It was an experience. It's like that time I randomly went to Italy and blew like 10k on the trip. <laughs> I'm not going to get that money back, but I had a hell of a time. And, and I see Dofus in the same light. I haven't talked much about my personal life at here at all, but my life has radically changed since I started making content. Uh, I'm not a young buck like many of you guys. Some of y'all just be kids out here. <laughs> So I've been around the block, uh, you know, I have a good career, I make a good living, I live like five minutes from the beach, life is good, life is good for me, worrying about a game is nowhere near my radar right now, and again, this was all for fun, 100%, I mean, I've looked at the numbers, and the English community is tiny, like ridiculously tiny, I have the numbers from my channel, and I would put the English community under or around a thousand people, give or take. A couple hundred. Crazy, right? If that's not proof that this was all for fun, then I, I don't know. <laughs> and yes, it, it is that small. <laughs> which, which is awesome because in a lot of ways, it does feel like a very tight community because it is. <laughs> so I've gotten, you know, a lot of you guys reached out. I've gotten to talk to you, a lot of you guys. And it's, it's been awesome. It's been awesome because it is a small community. And another reason why I don't feel too salty about the turn of events is that I was able to get what I wanted out of the game. I got to live out my quote-unquote childhood dream on touch from way back on those years where I was playing the PC version in the, in the mid-2000s. I was able to get my hands on all the Dofus, minus the Vobis, of course, F, F that one. I was able to see and experience what the endgame was like, having endgame stuff, and just having some badass characters. I was able to pit my team the way I built it against, against all the challenges the game was throwing at me, regardless of the meta. So in that way, I would be leaving the game with zero regrets and really in, in complete satisfaction. In a lot of ways, losing my stuff has been cathartic. This year has been, this year has been a crazy year where a lot of things came to an end for me, allowing for new things to start. Um, like this channel even though making content takes up a lot of time I had a lot of fun with it to give you guys a little bit of perspective uh, a little simple run it video could could mean hours of work to put it together I was very particular of how I presented the game and my content if the run was boring I would just rerun it and re-record and do the whole thing over to even spending hours to picking out the right track to go with the dungeon run even though they aren't really any other content creators for Touch, I, I really went in like there was, and my stuff just had to be the best. 
she uh, they don't call me challenger for no reason <laughs> pc community y'all better watch out but for real those like those beginner's guide videos i put together whew, i would put those like at probably 10 plus hours probably some going 20 plus hours and let me tell you the Nelissa guide i was putting together oof it was gonna be so badass guys i'm not gonna lie it was gonna be legit I did a ton of research for that one. I, I scripted the whole thing. I recorded the audio. Just the guide portion of the video was gonna be 30 minutes. 30 minutes of really dissecting the dungeon. I even looked into all the references, like the, uh, the names of the attacks. I went all in on that one. And a big part of why I didn't put it out was just like, it, it was gonna be a huge time sink for me. And that dungeon is tough too. It was it was tough. It took me forever to beat it with my team, and and that was that was a time sink in its own, which was a, a big reason why I started like my series, like run it, and um, and it's time to duel, just because I was able to just take my team, run them through a dungeon, record the gameplay, and I was done. I wasn't doing any commentary. I wasn't scripting anything. I wasn't editing a whole lot, um, though I I do have a tendency of getting fancy with my stuff. <laughs> A lot of people love the uh, the Telfo kill with the Uppy Walker dungeon run. So I, I like to do little things here and there. But for the most part, they were the kind of videos where they were manageable over the weekend. To be honest, guys, the thought of having all this time open and available is very enticing. But also maybe, maybe channeling what uh, I have been doing this past year on Touch and redirecting somewhere else because... Yeah, I learned all this stuff on the fly, guys. So all this whole editing, all the special effects stuff, re putting those videos. I did. I had no idea what that, what I was doing at the beginning. Yeah, I would spend so much time just watching YouTube videos. Like I wanted to do something, I don't know how to do it. I would just search it up on YouTube. So this was definitely a skill I picked up uh, this year: how to edit videos, how to create content, pretty much. So definitely giving some thought of you know maybe maybe putting what I learned and. Doing, doing something more with it. And I'm not complaining that uh, because we all know the community is small guys. Like I'm putting all this work and really it, it doesn't really matter if the video gets 20 views, 100 views, 1,000 views. It made no difference to me. What really mattered to me in the end is putting something out that I was proud of. Something where I, I, I would rewatch a lot of my stuff I would put out and sometimes I'd be like, damn, that was pretty legit. And sometimes I'd be like, okay, I could do that better next time and just learn, make it fun and enjoyable. And really, if I enjoy the video I put out, that, that was a win for me, pretty much. But definitely when you guys would reach out and comment on the video, you guys loved it. It was awesome. It helped you guys in some way. That would just be icing on the cake, really. That definitely appreciate the love from the community when it came to the videos. So in all, this is why I'm not too caught up with losing my stuff, you know. It is what it is. Like I mentioned, I'm no, I'm not a young buck. You know, life happened to me. You know, I, I know life changes. Life has a tendency to just change out of the blue, whether you want it or not. And this is how I know how some of y'all be some young bucks out there. <laughs> when y'all be complaining about uncommon doing tweaks and updates. But I'll tell you this. If you ain't changing, you ain't moving. And this goes for both uncommon on the developer side and, and the players when updates and revamps happened. <laughs> With that being said though, guys, I still love the game. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. It, it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I got up at four in the morning to watch the Crossman note from start to finish. Oh boy, don't, don't get me started. <laughs> nah, screw it. We going there. We, we going there. This might be the last Dofus to soccer radio. So we going there. So, they could have left the little they spoke and showed about Duffus Touch, and nobody would have bad an eye. I was lurking in, um, in Lady Masai's stream. Shout out to Lady Masai. Uh, she's, a, uh, she's a streamer on, a, on the PC side of things. So, she does her, her stream on Twitch. And so, I was peeping in there, you know, see how they would react to, to the Touch announcements. And it was pretty much crickets. <laughs> and I, I don't blame them. I, I do feel like the game has a huge problem with image and 
and the and the super slow update rollouts. You know, if I was looking from the PC community into touch, I'd be like, we we got this over. We saw this. Like, what y'all still messing with the Pan Pandala revamp stuff? Like, what what's going on on there? We out here with the Bonta and the Brackmar and the new Rainbow Dofus. Like, get out of here. <laughs> And I'm like peeking over the fence here to the PC side and seeing all their announcements. And I'd be like, what you got going on over there? Oh, what? What's that? Oh, oh, what's that over there? Damn, that'd be looking good though. How come we don't got that yet? You guys are doing what now? What, for reals? Ooh, that looks not, ooh, what? <laughs> not going to lie, guys. Looking at PC, looking at all the love it gets. It really makes me feel like I'm, I'm missing out. While touch is different, you know, it's its own thing. It's its own experience. It's, it's hard not to compare the two. And it's obvious Dofus Touch is it's like their little dinky side project. And it was even more evident when they did the Ankama Live that was specifically in English for the English community. There was not a peep about touch anywhere. But again, if you look at the big picture with a with an audience size of like a thousand people, why bother, right? Why bother? So while the PC Dofus is getting this giant expansion and exciting updates, we just get a picture with some text that says legendary weapons at the bottom. <sighs> that that's our big thing, guys. Legendary weapons. Oh, no, and also they're going to keep fighting the good fight. They're going to keep fighting the bots. You know, the thing they're, they're supposed to be doing anyways. But let's make it a huge, uh, let's make it a talking point. Let's, let's put it right there next to the legendary weapons. Since we are talking about PC, a lot of you have reached out because, uh, because of the turn of events. I did go on Twitter and, you know, post about it. And some of you have been wondering if I'll transition to PC. Yeah, y'all really want me over there, huh? Here comes a new challenger. <laughs> I actually interact with a lot of those guys over there. I interact with a lot of the content creators. And it's definitely an option. Uh, I would love to uh, be part of that community and maybe collaborate with some of these guys. It, it, it would be awesome. And I have been itching to play PC and experience that side of Tophis for for a bit. Especially since I'm more interested in like story and lore, doing quests, and knowing that all the dofus are like quest rewards over there, it's, it's very enticing. And when it comes to making content for the PC side of things, uh, I could definitely bring to the table what I've been doing with Touch. But the only thing is that I'm, I'm probably more gimped over there than I am on Touch. <laughs> so even though they took all my stuff on Touch, uh, um, some of my stuff was kind of scattered all over the place. So they mainly took what I have equipped. So the stuff in the mounts, the stuff I had in the bank, the stuff I have in my uh, house chest, that's still there. It's like low level stuff, but um, it, it does give me kind of like a stepping stone if I do decide to rebuild. But I will still be operating like at 10%. <laughs> on PC, I do have a squad of four on, on the Echo server. Uh, but I don't even I don't even have a level 200 character over there, so I will have to get acclimated to the new, you know, do Dofus PC mechanics. I have to farm, build, grind, all that good stuff before I would be in a position to start making content for PC. So no matter if I transition to PC or stick with Touch, I gotta build, I gotta grind, and I gotta play. And if I play. I, I can't make content. Playing for fun and playing to make content are, are two different things. Uh, the big difference is, you know, when I play on my own, you know, you guys don't see all that boring stuff or the grinding or the farming or the dropping stuff. And when I make content, you know, it's got to be entertaining. It's got to be informative. I can't just throw something together and, and put it out there. And because I'm limited on time, I I can't do both, unfortunately. And that's the big thing here. It's it's time. With my fully decked out team on touch, I, I didn't really have to worry about playing. Actually, actually, 
I would say I haven't played the game since I started making content because I was I had everything I needed to record content for you guys. But now I have to I have to get what I need. So the big question on the table is where where does that leave me then? Well, like I said, life changes. You have to learn how to pivot and I can't pivot. I have a huge list of stuff I wanted to do with Toughest Touch. Definitely had series where it wouldn't require my main team. It wouldn't require um, using the stuff I lost. So in theory, I could continue to make content for Touch. But guys, after something like this, the drive and the motivation to continue with Touch has plummeted, unfortunately. I have zero will. To, to even just log into touch at all. And right now, I just wanna chill. Um, I'm living my best life right now, and I just, I just wanna chill. If I do play Dofus to any capacity, it would probably be on PC on the Echo server during my downtime. Ah, shoot, guys. Yeah, it would probably take me a good solid year to rebuild what I had. And that's, and that's if I stay on top of it. You know, Dofus, Dofus is an awesome game, and, and it's a time sink. At the end of the day, that's what it is. It's a hard game. It requires a lot of dedication. And, yeah, I'm not one to retread old waters. Like, what's done is done. And especially with the way things are going, I'm having less and less time with the stuff. Uh, like I said, I became a partner, content creator with Ankama. They wanted me to do, like, this little giveaway for... For the Plantala update, but I was in the middle of moving into a new place, so even if I wanted to, I I just wasn't able to get that video out at all. So to wrap things up, guys, I'll be going on a hiatus. It's the holidays, anyways. But ultimately, there's a very slim chance I'll be returning to Touch. I know it sucks, but again, it is what it is. Uh, all the videos I can stay up up on the channel. I will probably stay pretty active on Twitter, uh, so if you want to reach out there, uh, feel free to do so. I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, description. But that's it, boys. We uh, we've, we've reached the end of the line. You know, it was short-lived, but uh, it was a good run. It was a good run. Thank you, everybody, for the support on the videos. I'm happy I was able to, you know, represent the community on the content creator space. And ultimately, you know, just give this game some, some, a little bit of love. <laughs> As always, until next time, this has been Challenger EX with Dofus, Touch Talk Radio. Take care of yourself. Peace.